Welcome to part 2A of the Vertical Vivarium Conversion Mini-Series. This episode is called 2A because I will show you how to make several types of naturalistic vivarium backgrounds within this series. I chose this method first because it's my personal favorite and I think that it provides the best results. Remember also that all of the principles that I show you in this series can easily be altered for a tank of any type or size. In this demonstration I will show you how to make a great stuffed foam naturalistic background. Myself and others in the vivarium hobby have been doing this for years, so it's nothing new. This is the same type of background that is seen in my 125 gallon vivarium and the 5.5 gallon vivarium from this time lapse video. Anyways, I like this style of background because it's cheap, very effective, lasts long, and provides excellent results. To begin we have to remove our vivarium's door. This will make it much easier for us to work within the enclosure. And of course, you could build your background before converting your tank in the first place, but for me this order works best. Next, we have to clean our vivarium using rubbing alcohol. This will ensure that the foam optimally adheres to the glass, so anywhere that you intend to put silicone, make sure you clean it with the alcohol. After cleaning your glass, it's time to decide on decorations. By this, I mainly mean the larger elements such as this piece of wood. You don't have to incorporate wood in your background, but I think that it provides a more naturalistic look, and I've always done so. What I'm doing here is trying to see how the log best fits into the vivarium. This element should then be used to dictate how you apply the foam and design the background. Twigs and sticks however can simply be poked into the foam after it cures. Being that I don't want this log to be flush with the glass, I'm going to tie it up using some fishing line. What I'm trying to do here is determine where the line should be placed in order to properly position the log. Then I tied the log onto these points. Luckily, I have a vent right above my workstation, so I tied the line around the bars. After doing so, I placed the log into the enclosure and pulled the lines until I got the right position. After this, I tied them in place. If you want to add plants such as bromeliads to your background, it's good to use plastic planters. As you can see, I'm stuffing them with paper towels so that the foam doesn't sneak into the cracks. After doing so, set them aside for later. As the name implies, this foam expands. The goal is to fill the gap between the log and the glass. If you don't have a log, you can simply apply a thin layer of foam to the glass. Definitely wear gloves during this process. This foam will stick to your hands and is really difficult to remove. Begin by covering the glass with an even layer of foam. After doing this, build up the desired depth. We're going to carve away at least 50% of this, so don't worry if you put too much in. The directions on the can say not to spray the foam thicker than 2 inches. I spray it much thicker than this, and to be honest, this is the thickest background I've ever made. It gave me a few issues that I've never encountered before, but regardless, the background turned out great. So if you want to make your background this thick using this specific foam, do so at your own discretion. There is foam designed for use in larger spaces. Continue to spray down the foam until you create a nice layer. This takes at least 8 hours to cure. I suggest waiting a full 24 hours before doing the next step because you will likely exceed the recommended thickness. In effect, this takes longer to dry. I was able to pull off this background using 1.5 cans of GS foam. You could probably get away with using just one though. Now is when our planners come into play. I like to wait until the foam cures for about an hour so that it's a little stiff. Then I just press the planners into the background. I find that this works best because the foam holds the planners in place. After letting the foam cure it should be firm to the touch. Now it's time to carve it. I'm using two types of scrapers and an X-Acto knife but you could use other utensils if you want. Make sure to have spare blades, as this process works best with a sharp blade. Before getting started, I removed the fishing line from the log.
The top layer is the hardest to remove, but once you get through this layer, it is relatively easy to carve. As you are carving your foam, make sure to leave the bottom 4 inches or so clear of foam. Our false bottom and soil will be going in this area. This can be accounted for as you are applying the foam in the first place, but mine expanded more than I expected. Anyways, continue to carve the foam until you are pleased with the results. Here's the issue that I ran into from applying so much foam. In some spots the foam didn't completely cure. When I cut into said spots, wet foam oozed out. I just had to let these areas cure before I continued carving, which didn't take very long. When carving your background, consider what type of animals you will be housing. I intend to put a semi-arboreal animal in this particular vivarium, so I wanted the background to have a lot of definition and climbing spaces. I also wanted an area at the very top for said animal to hang out. I even carved out a really nice cavern that you will see shortly. This will give my animal an additional hiding place other than amongst the foliage. I say all of this because I want you to have an idea of why I am carving this the way that I am and so that you will make all of your decisions based on the animal that you intend to house. Also you will notice that there are usually empty pockets within the foam. Try to remove these the best you can, but if they are present, it's not the worst thing that could happen. Once you have finished carving, remove all of the debris. This is probably easiest with the shop vac. Now you're probably thinking this looks pretty hideous. No worries, if properly executed, you won't see any of the foam when we are done. That being said, let's conceal the foam. Get the caps from your foam or something similar, a few cheap paint brushes, and some brown or black silicone. I'm using both brown and black, but you can use a single color if you want. As always, make sure that you are using 100% silicone with no additives. I was able to get away with using about a tube and a half of silicone for this process. I also suggest wearing gloves as this is very messy. Squeeze out some of the silicone into your cap. After doing so, begin painting a thick layer of silicone onto the background. You could also just caulk the silicone right onto the foam and then smooth it out with your brush. I wasn't able to film this entire process because it's time sensitive and very messy. Normally this wouldn't be a problem but I didn't want to keep removing my gloves to adjust the camera. Considering this you want to apply your silicone quickly so that it doesn't lose its tack. As you can see I made a total mess but this is easily managed as you'll see shortly. After applying a nice layer of brown silicone I topped it off with some black silicone. Now we are going to cover the silicone using orchid bark, sphagnum moss, and cocoa fiber. You could simply just use cocoa fiber, but I add orchid bark and sphagnum moss to make an even more natural look. Start with the bark and sphagnum moss. Sprinkle a little bit onto the background. Then dump a lot of cocoa fiber into your vivarium. After dumping it in, lightly pack it onto the background. Then let the cocoa fiber sit on the silicone for about 2 hours. Afterwards, tip the vivarium so that most of the excess falls off. This will allow better air circulation through the enclosure, which in turn will allow the silicone to cure faster than if it were completely covered. Next, we will remove the excess silicone. I find that this step is easiest if the silicone isn't totally cured. I began to clean the glass at about 6 hours in. You could do this after the full 24 hour cure if you want, but it's probably not necessary. 
Simply use your blade to remove the excess silicone and pull it away with your fingers as seen here. I also had to cut some of the excess silicone off of the log using my X-Acto knife. After cleaning up the excess silicone, wait 24 hours until removing the rest of the excess cocoa fiber. You can do so by tipping the vivarium and vacuuming out any remaining cocoa fiber. Now you're probably wondering about hiding the foam on the side of the vivarium, right? Well there are a couple of ways that you could go about doing this. I'm using some black enamel paint as this is what I typically use to paint the back of my aquariums. I suggest using matte as you really don't want this to be shiny. I applied two coats using a soft bristle paintbrush to achieve the final results. Be advised that you need paint thinner to clean the brush afterwards. If you want a less permanent solution, you could simply glue a piece of paper on the side of the glass. After your paint is dried and your silicone is cured, your new great stuff from naturalistic background is ready for action. It's easy to overthink this process, but it really is quite simple. Just follow the steps provided and you'll do just fine. <laughs>